meet Christiane. It was a beautiful day. I never dreamed she would be so beautiful and so perfect. That was a very happy, happy moment. That was the happiest day of of our lives, really, to look in your little girl's eyes for the first time. And so she's been Daddy's little girl ever since. I love you, Daddy, a hundred and a million one. <laughs> You're my little bunny. Christiane Benson may look and act like any other eight-year-old, but she isn't. Christiane has Batten disease, a fatal genetic disorder that attacks the nervous system. It will take her sight. It will take her mind. And eventually, it will take her. The day we got Christiane's diagnosis um, was a horrible, obviously very painful day. It forever changed our path. You know, every day there's a new realization of what you, you won't get to experience or you won't get to enjoy with your, you know, daughter going to high school or going to college. You know, Christiane's talk, you know, one day she'll talk about when she grows up and goes to college. Mom, I'm going to be a teacher. A teacher? She's not going to have a wedding dress and get married. People are always curious about how Christiana is doing, and you know, I'm amazed by her courage. We've actually told her that she has Batten. She does know that she's going to be blind. You know, she voluntarily tells her friends that um, she's losing her vision and that one day she's going to be blind. Instead of being afraid of it, she's actually really embraced it. And uh, you know, I mean, that gives, as a parent, gives you so much courage and strength to draw from this little seven-year-old that is paving the trail. But the Bensons are just one of many families that live with this devastating illness. I was out back exercising and had run in for a drink and the phone rang and I saw it was Texas Children's and I answered it with so much confidence like, oh, they don't have anything, they don't know, they're gonna have to keep testing. And the genetic counselor was crying and I immediately knew something horrible was wrong and she said that he tested positive for Batten disease, which um, it literally took me to my knees because um, I hadn't prepared myself at all for something like that. What I think the hardest thing is, is the recognition that if you don't do anything, that you're gonna watch your child die a slow and painful death as he loses his mind and his body. Failure is not, a, is not an option. For us, it's, it's become our life to change this and save Will. And I do believe with all my heart that we are gonna do that. Shortly after receiving Will's diagnosis, the Herndons joined forces with the Beyond Batten Disease Foundation by creating the Will Herndon Fund at the foundation. With the help of supporters like you, the Beyond Batten Disease Foundation has made great strides in the past year but there are still many miles to go toward a treatment or a cure. We formed Beyond Bat Disease Foundation with a mission of eradicating bat disease. So we plan to go about that mission and successfully complete that mission in two ways. First, by funding research for treatments and cures for bat disease. Secondly, we plan to eradicate bat disease through a prevention strategy by developing a comprehensive carrier screening test that can determine carrier status for people contemplating a family in the future to tell them whether they're a carrier of any one of nearly 500 medically devastating genetic conditions. This carrier screening test initiative uh, that we'll be launching next year is gonna provide that income stream that's going to enable us to continue to make a treatment a reality. So the first major research initiative that, that we've sponsored and, and have undertaken uh, in the foundation started just over a year ago. And that's when we uh, funded a group of Italian researchers who have now relocated full-time in Houston at Texas Children's New Neurological Research Institute. 
Beyond Bat Disease Foundation has now engaged Dr. Danielle Kirkovich, to, uh, who is a PhD neurobiologist, to really immerse herself in the, in the world of bat and research. I was hired to work with investigators who are studying batten disease and to determine where we were, where we were, where we needed to go, what clues we had, and um, how we can work together in order to accelerate uh, research in this area, treatment-oriented research. I think a number of things are coming together. We know so much more about this disease than we've ever known. Things are really accelerating. It's like finding a lead in um, an investigation, any kind of investigation, that you need your detectives in order to pursue those leads. So, you know, we need to put the resources behind it. We have the talent. You know, people are interested, they're motivated, they're absolutely talented. We know where the resources are. We just need to put all the puzzle pieces together and make it happen. These people need funding. And if we're gonna accelerate something from an idea, from something that works in a dish, in a laboratory, to something that works for Christian, we need substantial funding to make that happen and to make it happen fast fast enough to make a difference. In addition to our faith, which is the number one form of sustenance that we've got, is, is hope. Every person who has contributed to these efforts, everyone who's sent us a note, everyone who's written a check, everyone who's volunteered at one of the events, everyone who's sitting next to, to you at a table uh, tonight is an important part of the solution here. One night recently I woke up in the middle of the night and I had read a devotional that just sparked something inside of me and it made me realize that this horrible disease can cripple and blind my child and destroy her life but it cannot cripple love. It cannot blind our faith. It can't destroy peace or courage. It can't take away all the love and support and friendship that we have surrounding us. And it will never, ever take away hope.